is Paris Parker. I'm eight years old. My talent is Taekwondo. This is Tyra Watts, and in this episode of Tyra's Travels, I'm going to tell you about my experience with decorating a float for the 123rd Annual Tournament of Roses, or Rose Bowl Parade. The Rose Bowl Parade is internationally televised, and over 70,000 people came from all over the Southern California region this year to stand along the five and a half mile route in Pasadena to watch the best bands and the most beautiful floats pass them by. On New Year's Eve, I went over to La Cunada, which is about 20 minutes northeast of Hollywood, to help the La Cunada Flint Ridge Tournament of Roses Association with their entry for the parade. This year's parade theme was Just Imagine, so the La Cunada group created If Pigs Could Fly. The La Cunada Flint Ridge group has been involved with the Rose Bowl Parade since 1979 and has won award 23 times. If Picks Could Fly won the Bob Hope Humor Award this year for its whimsical version of three pigs, two flying a plane high above the farmland, while a third pig is hanging onto the laundry line for dear life, as two ducks try desperately to get out of their way. The float measured 52 feet in length, 18 feet wide, and 23 feet tall. Rules for the entries in the Rolls Bowl Tournament of Roses Parade state that the entire float must be covered in real flowers or some sort of live vegetation, such as potatoes, rice and other grains, broccoli, peas, and coffee. For example, pink carnations comprise the three pig flying pigs. The patchwork fields consist of a variety of red, yellow, orange, pink, and peach roses, intermingled with blue irises and green carnations. The fluffy clouds were made out of cauliflower, kale, white spider mums, and orchids. The wings of the plane were made of tamales. The base of the silo is comprised of potatoes and turnips. The La Cunada entry is a self-built float, meaning the entire concept, funding, construction, and decorating is done completely by volunteers in the community. While the float structure, including the moving parts, is built during the summer and fall, Decorating occurs within days of the parade for judging and to keep the flowers fresh. I first jumped in by taking flats of pop flowers to various areas of the float. A flower is popped by snapping the base of the flower from its stem with your thumb. Proper popping is essential so that the bottom of the flower stays flat with the base of the float when applied with glue. While it's somewhat easy to do, after popping a few hundred of these, your thumbs begin to hurt. I next worked with Sarah, a transfer student from Saudi Arabia. We stuck rosebuds into a sturdy foam-like base, following the areas of the base of the float pre-painted by another group of volunteers. This was not a difficult job, but the areas we worked in were so close because of scaffolding, and we had to be careful not to crush the flowers already applied to the float. Shifting responsibilities, I then climbed the scaffolding above the cloud area at the front of the float, and I laid flat on my stomach on a board to place pop mums on the clouds. Because of blind spots and limited workspace, decorating supervisor Kevin Jacobs helped guide me in placing the flowers down in their respective spots. By the next day around the noon, the float was completed and now on show for residents of La Cunada. It was ready to be moved to a staging area in Pasadena. After working late into the night on New Year's Eve, I just had to go back to see it the next day. I even got a chance to crawl under the float and sit in the driver's compartment. There's a small area to see out from the driver's seat. 
That is because the actual pilots walk alongside the float and guide the driver via radio communication. As the pig pilot float crews down Colorado Boulevard, Frank Sinatra's Come Fly With Me crooned from the float speakers, much to the delight of the crowd. This was a fantastic opportunity for me to be involved in. I guess I did a great job because Kevin asked me to return next year to help decorate. I took my community service one step further. I have already submitted a contest entry for an idea for next year's parade. From La Cañada, California and the Tournament of Roses Parade, I'm Tyra Watts. Hi, this is Savannah Safari. My name is Savannah Leone. We are here at Parrot University with Debbie Foster. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, how about you? Good, thank you. So today we are here with Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what type of bird she is, please? Jasmine is a Moluccan or a Moluccan cockatoo. You will feel or hear both pronunciations. And you can see that they're a lot bigger than the umbrella cockatoos. And they have this gorgeous pink or salmon or peach coloring, mm -hmm. um, which is just beautiful. I love her color. It's beautiful. So how old is Jasmine? Jasmine is about 10 years old, and she's going to have a life expectancy of probably 75 or so. Wow. Well, what type of environment did Jasmine come from? If I remember correctly, she came from a good owner who had a lot of birds and was um, becoming older and decided that she probably couldn't continue to take care of all of the birds. So we had at least two birds come from that particular owner. Well, how will she get adopted? You know, unfortunately, the fact that she is beautiful and she is so sweet is going to make it difficult not to adopt her, but for her to stay in the home. And she's actually had three homes. Um, she is a cockatoo, and cockatoos by nature are noisy birds. The umbrella cockatoos are the number one rehome species for that reason. And so when people interact with her, she likes to have her head scratched, and she would let almost anybody do that. And she wants it all day long. So if people take her into their home and start scratching her head a lot, then she's going to start screaming because she wants her head scratched more, and eventually that will result in her losing her home. So we have to have her in a home where people understand that that's how that works, and they give her things to do that she can do independently. She doesn't have to be on their arm. She doesn't have to be getting her head scratched all the time. She can play by herself. What type of tricks do you have planned for us today, Debbie? We're going to see if she will show us a new trick, and again, this is something she's only been doing about a week or so, uh -huh. but it's called the Retrieve, and once again, it's based on target training originally, but you can present an object, and they take the object, and they put it in something. Uh -huh. So I laughingly said a while back, these birds need to start earning a living around here. All this expensive stuff that the toys that they get, and the good food in the cages cost a lot of money, so they need to start earning their living. So what I have done is I have taught about half a dozen of the birds to take a dollar bill and put it in a container of some mm -hmm. sort. Sometimes it's a pocket, sometimes it's an envelope, sometimes it's a box. So we'll see if she'll do that for us today. Okay. Good girl. <laughs> Now that wasn't too hard, so what we're hoping she will do is she'll start moving it a little bit further to put it in the box. And you notice she doesn't get reinforced if she doesn't put it in. Good girl. So I backed up just a little bit to make it a little bit easier on her. And I'll move it a little bit further. Didn't we get it? Here we go. Oops. You might want to hold it up a little bit closer to her mouth. There you go. All right, you're going to give it to her. Good Got girl. That. All right, nice. <laughs> Thank you for watching Savannah's Safari on Kid Time. Please join us next time when we visit Parrot University. You ready? Goes like this. There was once a little girl who lived with her mother in a little house. In the backyard, 
was a huge garden. And in the front yard was a huge garden. And her mother always said, you can play in the backyard, and you can play in the house, and you can play in the front yard, but don't go out the back gate. The gunny wolf lives out there. And if you go out there, he will surely eat you. And she said, well, of course, I will not go out the back gate because I do not wish for the gunny wolf to eat me. You guys have to sit up. You can't lay on the floor like that. Well, one day, the little girl and her mother went to town. And while they were there, they were shopping for a party. And they got all the way home. And you know how sometimes when you're shopping, you forget one thing at the grocery store? Yeah. Well, her mother forgot to pick up the bread at the bakery. And she said, oh, look. I'm going to get on my bicycle and I'm going to ride back to town. It's, it's not a very long time. I'll be gone, but I want you to stay home, all right? And you can put the groceries away. And remember, you can play in the backyard and you can play in the front yard and you can play in the house, but don't go out the back gate. The gunny wolf lives out there. And if you go out there, he will surely eat you. And she said, I don't, okay, I, I, how many of you hate it when your mother tells you the same thing over and over and over and over and over? It makes you feel like, I, you don't have to tell me that. I know that already. So the little girl said, I know. I will not go out the back gate. I don't want to get eaten. I know, OK? So her mother went off to the grocery store. And the little girl put everything away for the party. And then she noticed something. On the table was a vase. And inside the vase were some wilted flowers. And the little girl decided that she would throw the old wilted flowers away. And she would get some fresh flowers. And she would put them in the vase. And it would be a nice present for her mother. So she went, and she threw the old flowers away, and she went out to the backyard. And she was looking in the gardens. And it was between winter and spring. It was just sort of coming on to spring. And the, some of the flowers had already opened, but they were already wilted. And most of the flowers were not open at all, not yet. So she went into the front garden, and she looked around. Same thing. The ones that had already opened were wilted, and most of them were still closed. She couldn't take any flowers. So she thought, there has to be flowers somewhere. So she went back, and she was looking in the garden. And you know what she did? She found herself by the back gate. And she looked over the back gate. And on the other side, she saw a big patch of white flowers. And she got an idea. She said, I bet I could open the back gate. And I could go down there and pick those flowers and come back so fast my mother would never know I was out there. I could try that. So she opened the back gate. She looked around. She ran down as fast as she could start picking flowers. She picked white flowers as fast as she could, and she was going to turn around and go back up in, into the gate. And she looked, and she saw red flowers. They were a little further down the path, but they weren't that far. She figured she could go down there and pick those red flowers, and she, she could get back inside. Her mother would never know she was out there. And she ran down there. She started picking red flowers, and, and she, she turned around. She was going to go, but then she looked down a little further, and she saw blue flowers. Ah, oh, blue flowers are so pretty. And then she'd have a red, white, and blue bouquet. was so excited. So she went down. She started picking the blue flowers. And, and she was. She was going to go back. And she happened to turn around. You know what she saw? A whole field full of spring flowers. Different colors and different shapes. She forgot where she was. She ran out into the field. And she started picking flowers. And then she heard a sound behind her. <laughs> she turned around, and there he was, the gunny wolf. <laughs> huge, big, huge claws. <laughs> big, huge eyes. <laughs> a big, huge nose. <laughs> big, huge teeth. And bad breath. And he said, what are you doing? And she said, nothing. 
Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> Why are you shaking? I'm not shaking. Do you know any songs? Uh-huh. Well, sing one. Oh, okay. Sing! Okay. But she was so scared she couldn't think of anything to sing. So she had to make up a song. Come quacky. <laughs> the gunny woke fell asleep. And as soon as he fell asleep, that little girl turned around and started running! <laughs> but as she started running, the gunny wolf woke up. And he caught that little girl. And he said, Where are you going? She said, Nowhere. Why are you shaking? I am not shaking. You better sing me that song again. Okay. Come, qua, Well, this time the little girl stood there and waited for the gunny wolf to get a really good sleep on. He was starting to snore a little bit and getting really all comfortable. Then she turned around. And she started running! Well, as soon as she did, the gunny wolf woke up. He chased her and he cut her. And he said, Where are you going? And she said, Nowhere. Why are you shaking? I'm not shaking. He said, If you run away again, when I catch you, I will eat you. And she said, Okay. Now sing. Come, qua, ki, wa. <laughs> the gunny wolf fell asleep. But now she had a problem. If she started running and he woke up and caught her, he was going to eat her. But she was pretty sure if she just stayed there, he was going to eat her. But she didn't know what to do. So she tried something different. She used her eyes. And she looked around, and you know what she saw? A patch of blue flowers. The blue flower. So she waited till the gunny wolf was really, really in his sleep. And then she started to sneak away. She crept so quietly, so quietly. She got to the blue flowers. She went around the blue flowers. She saw the red flowers. Oh, she kept so quiet. Oh, she was so quiet. And she went around the red flowers. She saw the white flowers. And you know what else she saw? She saw the fence and she saw the open gate. Oh, she could have started running! And of course, as soon as she started running, the gunny wolf woke up. <laughs> and he started chasing her. And she was running, running! And he was chasing her. And she was running, ah! He was chasing her. And she was running, ah! He was chasing her. And she was running, ah! He was chasing her. And he was running, ah! And she got inside the door and she slammed the gate. Bang! And the gunny wolf hit his head on the gate. Bang! Oh! <laughs> and the gunny wolf went back into the forest with a big bump on his head. <laughs> and the little girl went and sat in the kitchen. <gasps> And you know what? She never told her mother that she went out there. But you know what? She never did it again. No matter how many times someone tells you it's dangerous, it's still dangerous even if you get tired of hearing about it. And that is the story of the gunny wolf. <laughs> What a silly story. See, that wasn't scary, was it? Yeah. I know, for some of you it might have been a little scary. Let's see. Who knows what you call animals when they're babies, they swim like fish. But as they grow up, they get legs and come out on land. Uh, yeah, on the front in the pink. Yeah. A tadpole is a baby what? Yeah. A baby frog. Does anybody know what group of animals frogs are in? Uh, toad, just another type of frog, yeah. Amphibians, yeah, that's a big hard word, but it's animals with slimy skin like frogs. So you guys want to see a really fun frog? Yeah. It doesn't sound like it. You guys want to see a frog? Yeah!
Oh, that's much better. This is a really cool frog. This is called a white tree frog. It's kind of like a red eyed tree frog, but he doesn't have red eyes, does he? They close their eyes, then they have, then they open their hair. Uh huh. Once they want to eat somebody. Yeah. And now, tree frogs are really, really special. Did anybody notice anything special about its toes? What did you notice? You forgot? Yeah. yeah. What did you notice about its toes? They have, they have these red dots on them, and they stick to them. Very good job. They have sticky little toes. Watch this. Look. It can go all the way upside down without falling off. So you can see they're super good climbers. So they live in the trees. So that's why they're called tree frogs. <laughs> exactly. That makes sense, right? How does he get down? Well, he can let go of when he wants to. Save us, Captain Fluoride. Captain Fluoride. Helps you brush your teeth. Captain Fluoride. Shows you how to eat. He goes round and 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 round These pet marshmallows certainly are the craze. They're so cute and cuddly. Catch a four-eyed, it's the smile signal. Commissioner Gorgonzola needs us. Stay good and stay clean. What's the problem, Commissioner? We came as soon as we heard. We have reports of baby teeth getting weak, losing their luster and becoming discolored. Oh my! I've never seen so... All the humanity! These teeth are dirty. Stage one. I think we can help. We just need to run this through the lab at the anti-plaque headquarters. Right! to anti-plaque headquarters. I have it. Candy Head is behind all of this. I know it. Before we put him away, he must have gone through the city, setting booby trap truffles, gumdrop drop-offs, electric licorice, barbed wire bubble gum, slippery sodas, candy corn thorns. I've seen this before, Flossie. Gobstopper robbers, candy crooks, gummy bear burglars. You don't really believe that, do you? Nah. Call the doc? Call the doc. We have reports of dirty little teeth all over the city. I'm glad you asked, Captain Fluoride. It's normal for cavities to develop when kids have too much sugar. What happens is that the sugar combines with the bacteria that are normally in their mouth, and that produces little holes or cavities. So what I'd have you recommend to the kids is that they limit their sugar intake. So the little teeth can never have sugar? We're gonna have a riot on our hands, Flossie. But the question is, where are the little teeth coming in contact with sugar? This is some major damage. It must be the pet marshmallows. Right. The marshmallows. Come on, Flossie, before it's too late. Thanks, Doc. the chewing surface of each tooth.
use the tip of the brush to clean behind each front tooth and brush top to bottom. Kids, it's easy to fight tooth decay. Just remember to brush between meals, floss at least once a day, and eat fruits and vegetables. Get rid of the bee, don't we? All right. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, I N G O, I N G O, I N G O, and Bingo was his name. Oh. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo. two favorite games? I don't know. Leapfrog and croquet. <laughs> what did the, what does a bee say before it stings you? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> what, why did the spider buy a car? Why? To take it for a spin. <laughs> What does the baby banana say to the mama banana? What? I don't feel good. 